what we're going to be doing today, we'll start with that intersection, or we'll, we'll aim towards rather, that intersection of where the geometry meets the art. And we're going to try to bridge that. And so let's talk about what makes up a geometric tessellation. And you're going to hear me use words, for instance, regular and semi-regular tessellations. A regular tessellation is where you can tessellate a surface um, with using only one geometric shape. That's all. And for instance, shapes with four sides like these, the rhombus, the parallelogram, the rectangle, the square, tessellate perfectly. Just like this. So there's only one shape. Um, a second possibility is triangles. And you notice that there's only one shape there, too. And so these are regular tessellations. And then finally, the third, and there's only three of the regular tessellations, the hexagons. And I think you notice that what was very boring and very plain a minute ago when we looked at the square tessellations, you know, the regular squares, suddenly becomes a lot more interesting when we add color. And this is where the art comes in, of course. And now what we have, oh, well, we just jumped, didn't we? Because we have hexagons, squares, and triangles making up these shapes. And let's see what else we can find with semi-regular. So here we have the dodecagon, the hexagon, the square, and the triangle. And this is where it gets a lot of fun. Because so much is going on here, and the decoration possibilities are extraordinary. As a matter of fact, that's what we're going to do in a minute. But first, I just want to cover a little more of the geometry before we get into having some fun with color and shape. Uh, because there's a word that I'd like you to learn, which is vertex. And the vertex is that point right there that I have marked. And it's the point where the corners of a tessellation come together. Yeah. So you'll mark a vertex, and then do the numbering, counting around that vertex, and then just mark it at the bottom. We're going to be actually be doing more with the sheet. In how many figures, how many sides does that start with? Ah. It's touching by the corners. So, yeah, thank you. Right. Thank you. Okay. Um, I would like you to, to color your tessellation that's in front of you, your semi-regular tessellation. Um, and the goal is not to have, as we were talking earlier, two colors touching side to side. They may touch point to point. That's all right. But not side to side. But color it in a pattern using the minimum number of colors. Mm -hmm. I had to look at it a different way. That's not at all how I thought it was going to turn out. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Interesting, because it goes with this. And so the first type of Escher tessellations we're going to do is called a translational tessellation. And this is the process that we're going to go through right now. Uh, we're going to start with a square. And then, you know, we have pencils on the table. We're going to give you um, the squares. And we're going to use simply a 3x3 three three piece of an uh, index card. That's what we're going to start with. And we're going to have you cut out a shape. And the translation happens when you then slide that shape to the opposite edge. So let me cut around here like this. coming down to about here. Tape. We're going to put tape on all the tables. So if you'll just take a piece of tape and tape down what you've just done. So let me try to get it here. That's the rule. <laughs> okay. So now we have something like this. Let's get to this point. Although I think what I'm going to do is then show you what the next point is. Trace your shape like this, both top and bottom. 
Now the nice thing about this process is, is that we're going to actually have 12 shapes tessellating, but you only have to cut out about six of them because we're going to use the opposite colors or something. So yeah, keep it simple for this time. The last time I gave the workshop, I think the people who were most successful were the people who kept it simple. Because we had people who were coming up with these great ideas, and then they discovered that we had to cut it out. You know, and they're snipping and going, oh, no, and they're getting little pieces of tape and things like that and putting them together. But he had, he had the ability to think in these terms. That's that what they do? Do they shape six of the things to you? Ladies, over here? Yeah, these are just, Pat decided to do two, and by the way, they do line up in the back. I think they're very whimsical, actually. But do you see somebody who looks like, what's the name of the, uh, the dog in um, Garfield? Odie. Odie. You see a little Odie there, you know, a little tail and his ears and his little nose and stuff like that. Could be. This one here, I'm not entirely sure. I see a bird. A bird, or maybe a frog sitting on a lily pad or something like that. There's lots of possibilities. And then just then move over here and do that there. And then you'll slide everything out. Yeah. But then you'll cut this and move that out too. You know what I like about this the best is just the bottom here. You know, where we go to positive, negative, positive, you know, and it goes like that. And, and you know, that's really what we're creating here. And we were talking about contrast a minute ago. And contrast, of course, is what sells a picture, you know. And uh, in so, most cases, not, all, not always. You know, certain artists, you know, were very atmospheric. But uh, in this case, and you can imagine what you'll do up here, too. Yeah. say I'd be able to do Vanilla and chocolate. Aww. And it reminds me of those soft serve bones hey, and soft go to serve Sundays. Go to Dairy Lane and get us some. Yeah, it reminds me of the, you know, getting a, a Sunday on a, a hot August evening, walking up to the soft serve place, the Dairy Queen or the Dairy whatever. <laughs> And we had Dairy Isle, actually, for some reason. I don't know where that name comes from. But, you know, uh, you know, getting something like that on a hot summer's evening, it was a treat to go up with uh, oh, yeah. my folks and having this. And is this complicated? No. Is it evocative? Yes. <laughs> What's that? Oh, yeah. Exactly. Thank you.